Okay, uh, welcome back. So this is as far as we've gotten so far in our project. We have it so that we can uh, detect matches. If we have a match, then the columns collapse. Um, and if we get something that isn't a match or try to do something that's an illegal move, we don't get like a weird thing for the illegal move. And if I swap two things that aren't a match, they swap back. So, all right, so far so good. So let's take a look at uh, our code here. What we're going to do today is we're going to add uh, some logic here to kind of create some, uh, create the extra dots and then check to see if there are any new matches and then create more dots and so on. So we kind of create like a game loop here. So what I want to do here is I'm going to create a kind of generic state machine. Um, a state machine is going to control which um, state of gameplay the game manager is in. So like for example, if it's filling the board, if it's waiting between things to happen, uh, if it's destroying pieces, so on and so forth. So to do this, I'm going to go to the game manager's create event. And in here, it doesn't matter where, I'm going to add a little line state is equal to, and I'm going to say fill. There's a bunch of different ways to do a state machine. Um, I'm used to doing it a different way with C Sharp, but as far as I can tell, this is going to work just fine for GameMaker. The one thing you have to make sure that you're being cautious about, though, this is true for all coding, is if you call this capital F fill, you need to make sure, one, that you spell it correctly every other time you use it. Well, it doesn't have to be correct. It just has to be consistent. So like if you misspelled fill here, you need to misspell fill everywhere else. And make sure that your um, case sensitivity is you know, there. So like this is capital F fill. So if you try to invoke it later with lowercase f fill, it won't work. All right. So next, I'm going to, in my, this is in the game manager, if you didn't see, I'm going to add a step event. Oop, no, I didn't mean to make it a begin step. Let's change that to plain step. Okay. And for my description, I'm just going to call this my state machine. All right. So um, I'm going to create something called a switch statement, which is something that allows us to it's kind of like an if-else statement, but for a bunch of different cases. So I'm going to do switch, and I'm going to switch on the state. Um, OK, and then switch statements check different cases of this variable in here. So the first case I want to check is so case fill, using capital F just like I did a second ago. I'm going to use a colon. I'm going to enter twice, and I'm going to break. Uh, switch cases need to have colons for each case, and then you also, at the end of each case, need to have a break statement. Otherwise, uh, it can get stuck, or it can move on to the next case if you don't want it to. So I've got fill. I'm going to do case uh, wait. I'm going to break from that. I'm going to do case destroy. I'm going to break from that. Uh, I'll do case refill, and I'm probably not going to end up using all of these cases. Um, I just want to kind of cover all my bases now. And then uh, whenever you do a switch statement, it's best practices to do a default case. You don't have to, but um, it can freak out if you don't have a default state. So default, and we're just going to break if it's default. Uh, break is a command in programming that means to move out of the loop it's currently in. So what will happen here is every frame, um, when it makes a step, it's going to check the current state. And if the state is fill, it's going to do anything I put in here. Uh, and then once it's done with those things, it's going to break out of the loop, which is why it's important to have these breaks at the end. If you don't have that break, it just moves on to the next thing and then does the next thing too. Um, so it, it'll come in here, check the state. If our state is fill, it'll do the fill stuff, break out. If our state is destroy, it'll do the destroy stuff and then break out. So we're just kind of creating um, a way to have this one object act as many different objects, because it can do a bunch of different things depending on which state it's currently in. Um, all right, cool. So the next thing I want to do here is I want to take a look at um, the destroy case. So I'm going to use the destroy case for the alarm zero. 
So in the alarm zero state here, I'm going to say um, alarm zero, which we already set. I'm going to set it equal to 20. And then I'm also going to change the case, or sorry, the state. I'm going to say state is equal to refill. So once we destroy, we're going to set the alarm to destroy, and then we're going to put our case, our state to be refill. Uh, okay. In the alarm zero event now, I'm going to comment out this line that's making it happen again and again. So rather than having it be something that's running in the background every 20 frames, uh, we're just going to have it happen when we need it to happen, which is going to save us some processor speed. Uh, okay, so next we need to trigger the destroy state. So in order to trigger the destroy state, we're going to go to our um, dot object. We're going to go to our step, which is the movement code. And then in here, kind of at the end of everything, we're going to have it check to see if it's currently grayed out and if the um, if the uh, game manager is in a place where it needs to destroy stuff. So I'm going to say if image alpha is equal to 0.2 and the game manager state is equal to we'll say wait then I'm going to set the game manager state to be destroy. Game manager dot state. Uh, it would help if I could spell correctly. Is equal to destroy. Okay. So there we go. All right. I'm going to test this out to make sure that I didn't just break the game. Um, I think I need to add one more thing in my alarm code here. Ah, yeah. I need to do state equals wait. OK, so that's in my uh, game manager, alarm 0. At the very end of everything, I just added state equals wait. So I'm going to save this. We'll hit play and try it out. So it's thinking. don't think I broke it, but let's find out. Sweet, I didn't break it. Uh, I didn't add anything yet, but it's not broken. So that's good. All right, so let's jump back to Game Maker. All right, so we're going to get some dots to generate in the empty spaces. So in the Game Manager object, go away. In the Game Manager object, I'm going to create a new event, and I'm going to call this uh, an alarm event, and this is going to be alarm one. And alarm one's description is going to be to refill the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and check everything that's on the board. And if there isn't a dot there, I'm going to create a dot there. So I'm going to say for uh, var i is equal to zero, i is less than, so I make sure I did width and height here, yep i is less than width, i++, plus plus. and then inside here for var j is equal to 0, j is less than height, j++, plus plus. oops, did I not start a brace? Yeah, I didn't. What are the, okay. So this is those double for loops that um, should be familiar from the beginning. Uh, I'm just kind of recreating them. Now what I want to do is I want to check if there's an instance at any of the positions that we need to have. But I need to create a variable for both the x position and the y position. So I'm going to say, because things are at weird coordinates, like my first piece isn't at 0, 0, like that's its row and column, but its position is actually like I don't know, 88, 150, or something like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, create a new variable. I'm going to call it x position. And I'm going to say this is equal to i times, did I call it offset in here? I did. So i times offset. Did I spell it weird? OK, cool. Sometimes I capitalize the s. I don't know why. 
uh, i times offset plus x start. And we're going to say variable y position equals j times offset plus y start. So these are my two um, x and y positions to start with. I'm going to say if um, there isn't a dot in those positions, so I'm going to use this uh, exclamation point. The exclamation point in GameMaker means if there isn't, like if this part isn't true, uh, instance underscore position. Um, oh, sorry, no, not position, place. Uh, I'm using place because I don't need to know the, uh, the object's ID. I just need to know if it exists. So if not instance place at x position, y position, and I'm looking for O underscore dot. That means if it's an empty spot, then I'm going to do something. And oh, I always forget to do the second parentheses here. And for some reason, I only do it in GameMaker. I don't know why. Anyway, so if there isn't a dot where there should be, I'm going to do. Well, that's super indented. There we go. Instance underscore create underscore layer. And I'm going to create at x position, y position. Um, I think my layer is 0. Is it 0? Yeah, it's 0. Um, and then the object I'm going to create is O underscore dot. Um, OK. So after this, I'm just going to change the state. I'm going to say state equals wait um, and then I need to have that alarm actually set from somewhere so it makes most sense to have alarm 1 set from when we destroy stuff which is alarm 0 so on alarm 0 I'm going to add alarm 1 equals let's do 20 again okay I'm going to save this and we'll test it out and see if I broke stuff again I often do. I don't know why I just opened that. Oh, OK. So some stuff is happening a little weirdly here. So let's change this. Um, I'm going to set alarm 1 to 30. State machine goes to destroy. Sets alarm 0, goes to refill. Alarm zero happens. State goes to wait. Oh, I'm going to change this from wait to something else. Um, let's say fill. And after I refill it, that's when I'll make it wait. So let's try this now. Creating dots where it shouldn't create dots, which is really weird. So let's take a look here at alarm one. Okay. So it is instance underscore position. That's my mistake. So this should be instance underscore position, uh, x position, y position object. So that's what that should be there. Uh, let me save this. And if we hit play, uh, let's take a look and see what happens. So, OK. So pieces fall down, new matches are made. When the new matches are made, stuff is grayed out, and stuff gets added. Cool. And that's, I mean, that's why people play games like this, is because they get like these really cool cascades to happen, um, where once you make a match, new pieces get added, you get another match, another match, another match, and stuff like that. The more pieces you have and the more um, overall tiles, the less likely you are to get a cascade like that. But when it happens, it's fun. Uh, OK. So next time, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that we don't start with a match on the board already. Because right now, the player can get up, I don't know, a whole bunch of points or feel like they really did something when they didn't do anything. They just turned on the game. So we'll fix that next time. Um, otherwise, uh, have a wonderful day. 
Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, down below. And follow me on Twitter if you want to, to find out when I post new videos. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.